ask questions. And my question is likely also in the regulatory phase, but still I'd like to get you on the record in terms of assets. How should the government, or should it at all, consider the assets held by a person with disabilities, their spouse, or other family members when determining eligibility for the benefit? I haven't thought of that. Uh, I'm, I'm happy to, to take a stab. Um, so I kind of interpret your question as, as two-pointed, whether it should be income-tested versus means-tested, and then yes. individual versus yes. family income yes. as well, kind of in that question. Um, so, so our position, it should be income-tested. It shouldn't be means-tested. Um, I think people may have inherited money, and there's a lot of thorns with that whole, whole process, but income-tested is generally, in our view, the best way to ensure that the benefit follows the person's lived experience and where they are at, at, at a current time. I think with respect to individual versus family, um, again, the benefit should follow the individual. Uh, there's been some great discussion so far before this committee on, on people with lived experience talking about their experience with a family benefit and how, that, how the harms it can create. I can add a few more um, from my own experience working with clients. Um, so I work in the Ontario sphere, so with Ontario Disability Support Program and Ontario Works. Um, in those situations, I've had cases where clients have caregivers. The caregiver is not a member of the benefit unit. But what will happen is the government will assume that the caregiver is a spouse and not, um, and that the individual is lying to the government about not being in a spousal relationship. And then they will need to have to prove that and show that the caregiver is not their spouse. They will need to, they're, they're asked intrusive questions about the caregiver's means and their income and all their other supports. And sometimes if the caregiver lives with the the person who has a disability, who's receiving ODSP, then they'll have border or rental income taken off from their ODSP amount, despite the fact that the per that's maybe the only way that the person can pay the person is by nature of them living in their, in their space. So when you have, and then uh, not to mention, I think what's been discussed too with the family income, you'll have people that are in domestic violent relationships who then feel like they cannot flee that space because it'll mean they'll lose their income support because their income support is tied to the family. Um, all of these are examples, I think, of why the family design of the benefit is, is not as effective as an individual design would be and why, in my view, the regulation should follow the individual. Thank you. Ms. Scott, if you... I can, we completely concur. That was an excellent summary of the, uh, certainly we would have argued in the, our own uh, work on this benefit that it should uh, be an individual income test and not a family income test for precisely for the reasons that Mr. Mertz, Mertzen laid out. Long, um, uh, strong body of evidence. Feminist economists have tra charted this issue for decades now about the, you know, the negative consequences that flow from the structure of family income benefits for women fleeing violence, any num other um, sets of considerations. In terms of, uh, you know, and we, we strongly support an income test to federal government as a federal a benefit, it's certainly um, as opposed to an asset or a means test, certainly uh, I'm, I'm sort of scratching my head thinking about it, a similar federal benefit that applies a means test and I'm, uh, I'm I, am I wrong to say I do, it's not appropriate? I mean, I don't. We, we don't want the federal government in the business of testing. You know, it's. I would argue it's uh, highly problematic as well. It's provincial and territorial level. But no, we strongly would argue this should be an income tested benefit. We um, that targeted to the most in need, and it should be attached to the individual as well to support people's lives and time. Given the fo the focus and the function of this benefit, not only to reduce poverty, but to lift and facilitate people's fulsome, um, you know, participation in the community, I think it's wholly appropriate. 